Basic Education Curriculum or BEC is an old education system which focused more on the knowledge, skills, habits, and attitudes of the learner. So it is congested into 10 years which is adequate for the competencies or the development of competencies among learners starting from the basic education which is 6 years in elementary and um, up to the high school which is composed of 4 years. K-12 curriculum is a new education system in the Philippines under the Department of Education. So it aims to enhance the basic skills of the learners to produce competitive citizens and to prepare the graduates for lifelong learning and employment. So when we say K-12, to it stands for K as kindergarten and 12 for 12 years in elementary and high school. So it consists 6 years in elementary level four years in junior high school and additional two years in senior high school. What are the difference between K-12 curriculum and BEC curriculum? So K-12 and BEC curriculum are both education system in the Philippines. But the difference between those two are the following. So first, in BEC, it is congested only into 10 years, which means there are six years in elementary level and four years in high school. On the other hand, in K-12 curriculum, it is decongested into 12 years, which means there are six years in elementary education, four years in junior high school, and additional two years in senior high school. Another difference between the two is that in BEC, kindergarten is optional only and it is not prerequisite on the admission for grade 1 which means that a parent can decide whether his or her child can or will undergo um, kindergarten or will proceed on grade 1 so this is what I remember and it, this is also based on my experience when I was in kindergarten because I have this classmate of mine before in grade 1 that he did not undergo um, kindergarten. He proceeded to um, grade 1 because he's already 7 years old and we became classmates during that time. Meanwhile, in K-12 curriculum, kindergarten is already mandatory for children who are already 5 years old and it is already prerequisite for the admission on grade 1 students. And the last difference that I noticed between the two is that the old curriculum or old educational system, BEC offers broad curriculum that does not include enough practical applications. Meanwhile, in K-12 curriculum or in this new education system, it offers the students or it gives the students the option to choose among three tracks which are the academic track, the technical vocational track and sports and um, arts track so aside from these three tracks that they have to choose they will also undergo some work immersions which will expose them or which will provide them some relevant experiences on the chosen track that they have choose so these work immersions will help the students to um, become prepared with the future job or future employment that they may encounter once they finish their senior high school. What are the advantages and disadvantages of BEC curriculum? So first is the advantage. Um, BEC is only congested into 10 years which means there are only 6 years in um, elementary level and four years in secondary level so because of this congestion um, this will focus more on the development of the skills of the learners as well as their habits their knowledge and their attitude so aside from those development um, this will also have a great emphasis on how the learners will become a successful reader 
This will also help them on how to become a self-reliant and patriotic citizens. This will teach the students um, some of the values in different learning areas and will also develop the students' critical thinking skills. So, for the disadvantages of BEC curriculum, here are the following. First that I noticed is the lack of mastery, the lack of experience, and basic competencies for those students who have graduated in the 10-year education curriculum. The second one is that those students who have graduated from this old curriculum are only 18 years old or younger than 18 years old, which means that they are not legally or their experience is not yet sufficient to look for a new job or to start a business. And the last thing that I always noticed is that um, the 10-year experience in education is perceived to be not enough or insufficient in other countries. That's why Filipino workers or Filipino graduates from the Philippines are always struggling to look for a job because a 10-year experience is perceived to be insufficient. And that is also the reason why Filipino workers are being unrecognized and being employed in a professional job in other countries. What are the advantages and disadvantages of K-12? So, for the advantages of K-12, first is that it is only or it is already decongested into 12-year um, educational experience, which means that this will give the students a more and sufficient time to master skills and to absorb basic competencies that they need to learn. Second is that those newly graduate uh, from this new curriculum are already 18 years old so they are now on the right age to um, look for a job so they can now be ready for an employment once they graduated in senior high school, they can look for a decent job to help them and their family or they may choose to pursue a higher education which is college. Next is that K-12 curriculum offers a lot of great opportunities for the students, especially the newly graduated students, um, especially if they choose to go to other countries, they will have um, better job and better opportunities there because of the sufficient educational experience that they have learned from K-12 education. And for the disadvantages of K-12 curriculum, here are the things that I have noticed. First is many Filipino families are struggling because for them, additional two years in study or additional two years in education means more expenses so it is very expensive for them and it aggravated their financial situations since philippines is not yet a progressive countries and a lot of families are still in poverty a lot of students are forced to stop their studying or they are forced to drop out of their school next is that what I noticed in this K-12 curriculum is that there are a lot of lacks when it comes to classroom, when it comes to teachers, facilities, and other resources. In addition, I also noticed that some teachers are not yet equipped or well prepared to teach in K-12. That's why some of them are being forced to take um, more loads and higher pressure in order to deliver the high quality of education for their learners or their students. That's all.